Hello friend, welcome back. Today we are heading into one of my favorite stores and I haven't been in there in probably over a year. We are heading into World Market and if we can't find what we need at World Market, we're gonna head to Michael's and possibly Hobby Lobby. I am a little late on my Christmas decoration shopping, but I was enjoying the Thanksgiving season and one of my friends, I was talking to her, she said she went Christmas decoration shopping two weeks ago and there was so much stuff and then she went yesterday and there wasn't as much stuff. So I'm hoping that we will be able to find what we need today. I think we will be able to. And today is Saturday after Thanksgiving. And so I'm hoping that there's still some Black Friday deals that are happening. This is perfect. It looks like we came at a great time. We still have 30% off for some holiday decorations, which is, which is great. So what I'm here for is a tree skirt. And the reason why I'm thinking I might need to go into a few different stores is because I want to find something that I'm going to really like for many years. The last tree skirt, well, I've actually never owned a tree skirt. The first tree skirt I ever used for the first six years of Josh and I's marriage was a tree skirt that it was a scrap piece of fabric my mom used growing up for many, many years until she quilted herself her own tree skirt. And then I inherited the fabric that she had used. And then last year, I used a white fuzzy blanket for a tree skirt and it worked just fine, but we invested in an artificial Christmas tree last year. And so I thought it would be nice if we could find a really beautiful tree skirt that, you know, we could add to the collection that I could use for a really long time. I'm also looking for some Christmas decorations to decorate the mantle and our dining room table. My kind of goal is to keep all of my Christmas decorations in one tote. And I know that this year there are some things in my tote that I have had for a really long time that are ready to be donated. And so we're just gonna see what beautiful things we can find here at World Market. I was absolutely blown away by the decorations they had here. I haven't been shopping in World Market in a long time and I had so much fun in here seeing what we could find together. So this is what I have to decide. They do have some of the tree basket type things here, or they also have tree skirts. Do I want a tree basket or a tree skirt? This is kind of what I used last year, what it looked like, except it was not an actual tree skirt. It was just a white fuzzy blanket I had that I put around the tree. They have a gold one, a silver one, or a basket. They had some of the most beautiful Christmas ornaments I have seen in a long time. The quality of the ornaments here just seemed so good and it was so fun looking at all the beauty. They also had some really fun advent calendars. That was something we did do every year when I was a kid is we had an advent calendar, but nothing this fancy. This is 24 cups of cocoa, Lindell chocolates. They had a bunch of different really fun advent calendars that had treats inside. The ones that we had growing up were just, you know, you open the little picture and there was a picture behind the picture. And that was still really fun as a kid, but these were pretty cool. I didn't end up getting one, but it was super fun to see all the creative advent calendars they had. So what I'm looking for really is something for the mantle and for my table. And my goal, just like when I decorated for fall, is to try to find a few pieces that can be transitional pieces that will make my home feel really beautiful and cozy for the holiday season, but they're pieces that could also transition to be used in other holidays so that I can kind of stick to my one tote goal and I can use and invest in some pieces that I can use for longer. Now they did have these absolutely beautiful table runners and I am looking for something for the tablescape, but these definitely scream Christmas to me, but they were so beautiful. They also had some really cool napkin rings and what i was really blown away by was the tablescape napkins and placemats the last few times i've been wanting to get a few new cloth napkins and placemats for dinner parties i've had i've looked at target and i have to say the selection here at world market is far superior and it was fun to see what they have so next time i have a dinner party i might have to stop in here and pick up a few pieces for decorating the table. Now, what we're doing today is getting decorations and we're gonna set up for Christmas. So we're gonna do all that this year, or this year, today. 
but we're also going to be baking some pies. We're celebrating Thanksgiving with Josh's family tomorrow, and I'm responsible for making the pies. So I thought we could kind of get the pies in the oven and then decorate. And we are also going to be making some homemade Christmas ornaments this year. The last year I was nine months pregnant and it was all I could do to set up the tree and put a bow on it. And that was the way the Christmas tree looked. I wanted to get to some homemade ornaments, but there was no bandwidth for that. And so today is the day we are going to make some cinnamon ornaments and some citrus ornaments. Now, I thought this was really cool. The one thing they had at World Market was they had a bunch of different aesthetic Christmas stuff. So they had like some rustic Christmas decor. I just thought this tablescape was beautiful. Not for Christmas necessarily, but just in general. I thought the plates and all of that was so beautiful. But then they also had some Christmas stuff that was really colorful, like non-traditional colors, like the pinks and teals. And so it was fun to see all the different you know, styles they had to offer at World Market. I think World Market is just a fun place to come and spend quite a few hours just looking at all the beauty they have. I think I got all the decorations I needed from World Market. I don't think we need to go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't know why I forget to go in that store. Next time I'm having a dinner party and I need some maybe placemats or napkins, that is the place to be. Way better selection than Target. And I don't know why I was so drawn to the red. I normally am not, well I like red nails, but I normally am not drawn to like red decorations, but they had some really beautiful stuff. I will show you everything I got when we get home. Now we're gonna head to Costco. I have three things on my list and I sure hope they have two of them. We need the garland and we need a wreath. I did run to Fred Meyers this morning because I needed to get a couple groceries for some things that I'm gonna be cooking this week. And I looked at the garland and wreaths they had there and they looked already half dried out, which so early in the season, I want it to last all season long. So I hope Costco has those two things. Plus I need some cranberries for some of the recipes we're gonna be making together this week. So three things on my list. Let's see if we can get in and out of Costco with only those three things. Friends, we are in luck. I've already seen, I just got into the store. Two people have beautiful wreaths in their cart. Looks way better than the ones at my local Kroger store. And I saw garland and here it is right here. Oh, they also have poinsettias. I probably didn't say that right. Oh yeah, these are beautiful and they smell incredible and they look so much fresher than the ones I saw at Kroger. These ones are a little smashed. Let me see if I can find one where the pine cones are smashed. Yeah, that looks a lot better. They have these 1.68 gallon pots for $16.99 for these red ones, or you can get a four pack for $19.99. I guess I've reached an age where I decorate for the holidays from Costco. So I can't decide, do you think I should get four smaller ones or two larger ones? I have to think where I'd put them in my house because you cannot put these outside. They are frost tender. Hmm. Yeah, protect from cold drafts and heaters. So you have to be kind of strategic if you want to keep them to last all season. Oh wow, look at these. I just remembered I forgot I needed ribbon for the tree and I didn't even look at World Market. That's what I was going to get at Michael's. So I hope that they still have the ribbon that they had last time I was here. These were all the selection that they had and now this is all they have, which is okay because I think I would have gone with this gold one anyway. And I will use this when I decorate Christmas candies that I'm going to gift. It's one reason why I love neutrals even for Christmas decorations like gold because I can easily use that for any holiday or 
yeah, any holiday. So it's just a little bit more versatile because if I'm gonna buy I was gonna say how how big it is. 50 yards, I want it to be versatile. I keep seeing this Costco monopoly going around on different people's videos. It's kind of interesting. I just had the thought, I sure hope Costco still has cranberries because we're after Thanksgiving officially at this point. They have cranberries, but they are ready to be used is a nice way to put it. And they were a great price though. So I will, today is Saturday. We're celebrating Thanksgiving with Josh's family on Sunday. And then on Monday, I am going to be making five cranberry recipes. And so that is going to be the first thing on my list this coming week is to experiment with some Christmas desserts that are not pies. So I think that this is going to be fun cooking with a bunch of cranberries. Now, I did pick up a Christmas cactus and put it in my cart, but I did put it back because I was trying to stay focused and just get what I needed today. We did really good at Costco and I was on my way home and I, I'm second guessing the ribbon. I don't love it. So I might be returning that ribbon. So I decided before I head home, let's stop in Michael's and see what ribbon options they have. I was thinking about it and I was trying to talk myself into liking it. And I think if I can find something that's kind of like a velvety, whether like a dark green velvet or a black velvet even or some sort of gold velvet. I think that that's what I would really prefer. So let's head in Michael's and see what we can find. I've been using the same ribbon on my Christmas tree. I don't have a tree topper. I have the same ribbon I've been using for I think since Josh and I got married and I made a bow and it's a bow that I put at the top of my tree and I have the kind of the bow tails that cascade down the bottom of like along the tree and I was thinking that this year I would revamp it and kind of give it a fresh ribbon, a fresh bow. And that is what I was thinking and why I was in the market for new ribbon. They didn't, I mean, they had a lot of ribbon at Michael's, but they, did, they didn't have as big of a selection as I was hoping for. <laughs> and so you'll see what I ended up getting and then you will see what I ended up, how I end up decorating the tree with the ribbon. I just got home and Josh had pulled out my Christmas tote and he also brought up my Christmas tree so we can decorate that. But before we can actually decorate the tree and I can show you all the goodies that I got and we can make this house feel so cozy and festive, I did go ahead and get the oven preheated to 250 for our cinnamon ornaments. Yesterday I got started on some ornaments and I knew that that was gonna take a good 24 hours before they would be ready. So let me bring you back to yesterday and show you what we did yesterday to prepare for today. One of the ornaments we're gonna be making today are lemon slices or citrus slices. You could use any kind of citrus you have on hand. I happen to have lemons, so that's what I'm using. And I'm going to use my Nakano knife to slice the lemons. I wanna thank Nakano for sponsoring today's video. Nakano is a Japanese knife brand and they know that chopping and slicing and dicing is the most fundamental skill we do in the kitchen as home cooks and having a sharp knife makes that job so much more enjoyable i have used dull knives and sharp knives and i can tell you to enjoy the task of cooking a sharp knife really does make a big difference nakano is having a site-wide sale if you shop through my link which i will link in the description box and use the code Acre Homestead for 30% off for today only for Cyber Monday. So the link will be in the description box and code Acre Homestead will get you 30% off. If you are looking for a Christmas gift for yourself or if you're looking for a Christmas gift for a loved one who you know loves to cook. So here I'm going to slice these lemons in about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. I wanted to make sure I slice them nice and evenly so they dehydrated evenly. I am putting these lemon slices on my dehydrator tray because I do not think a freeze dryer would work for this project. So I'm gonna get my lemons in the dehydrator. I'm gonna set it for about 118 degrees and I'm just gonna let this go overnight until we're ready to make these lemon slices into ornaments. So thank you again, Nakano, for sponsoring today's video. 
I'm really excited about those ornaments. I haven't actually even checked them yet today to see how they're doing, but they've been going for a solid, well, it's been 24 hours now at this point, so I'm hoping they are done. But before we check them and we make the pies, we still need to make pies for tomorrow's Thanksgiving feast. I'm gonna go ahead and make the dough for the cinnamon apple ornaments. I just measured out one cup of applesauce and now I'm gonna measure out one and a quarter cups of cinnamon. This is going to make the house smell incredible. I think that was how many I needed, but I'm not sure, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. You basically wanna make a Play-Doh consistency, and I am gonna add one more ingredient. This one is optional. I have to find it. And that is a little bit of clove. You can just do the cinnamon and applesauce if you want. Now we're gonna mix this together until a dough forms. This looks like the perfect consistency. It's holding its shape. And so I think I put the correct amount of cinnamon in there. So now we're going to roll these out. These last forever. The ones my sister and I made years ago, we have had forever. But if you want them to smell super strong in cinnamon, you probably need to make them every other year or so. And you can make these into whatever shape you want. I'm gonna roll it on parchment paper just so that it's easier and a little bit cleaner. Oh. I haven't done this in a long time. Okay, so I forgot what we're supposed to do first. Let's actually sprinkle some cinnamon. have an idea. Before I got started rolling this out or working with it with my hands, I had the thought, maybe I should put gloves on. Well, go with your intuition. <laughs> Definitely, I think if you're working with cinnamon like this, probably wouldn't hurt to throw on a pair of gloves. I just washed my hands and now these nitrile gloves don't wanna go on my hands. I also preheated this oven, oh no I didn't, bake, to 375 because I have an apple pie that I need to get into that oven, but I wanted to get these ornaments in the oven first because these were gonna take the longest to bake. So I think the biggest strategy here that worked the best is to use two pieces of parchment paper like this makes it much easier to roll out so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. That looks great. And then here I have another cookie sheet with some parchment. And you could cut these out in whatever shape you want, but the only cookie cutters that shapes that I wanna to use today are circles. So now this is going to be the trick how am I gonna get them from this cookie sheet once I cut them onto this cookie sheet or this piece of parchment? I'm just gonna start cutting the circles. Oh, 
Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Got one. There was a little bit of a learning curve when it came to this. The last time I did this was probably 10 or 15 years ago with my sister. And it was really my sister that was spearheading the project. And so I'm doing a lot of this from memory. And really the trick is to roll out your dough between two pieces of parchment paper. And then what I did is I used the cookie cutter and I cut my shapes and the offset offset spatula came in real handy for scraping the bottom of the dough and releasing the ornament and being able to transfer that. Now I did have some breakage throughout this process. Probably as I was doing it, I had six or seven break in either the transport of the ornament from the counter onto the cookie sheet or when I was using the straw to cut the hole. You can see here I'm having a little bit of troubles. I do get the hang of it and it's not a big deal if they break because you can just roll the dough back and make another ornament. I did find that it helped to cut the hole for the to be able to hang the ornament before getting the cookie out of the whole dough. I don't know if that makes sense. So here where I'm cutting the, the hole for the string, I just broke that one. There's something about the tension of it staying in with the rest of the dough that the ornament didn't tend to break. Once I transferred the ornament from the counter onto the cookie sheet and tried to cut the hole, I was noticing that the ornament was breaking and it just took a little bit of kind of trial and error, but it doesn't matter. See right there, that one broke. I just picked it back up, I put it in the dough, I re-rolled it, and we went on. So you can see here all the ornaments that I cut out, I went ahead and I cut the hole while it was still on the counter, and that worked really well. And if it breaks, it doesn't matter because you can just put it back in, re-roll it, and reuse it. I think I probably re-rolled the dough four times, maybe five times. And this is not like a pastry dough where every time you roll it, the consistency changes because there's more gluten development and things like that. It didn't change the consistency whatsoever. So, you know, re-roll it a hundred times, it's not gonna be a big deal. But let me tell you, friend, these turn out so incredibly cute. And if you want your house to smell like the holiday season, this is the way to do it. I was thinking that I'm so happy with how they're turning out. I was thinking that you could even use ginger or cardamom, allspice. Really, you could kind of play with nutmeg. You could play with a spice blend to change up the scent. Or you could just go with cinnamon and applesauce. It turns out really, really nice. The Clove was a new addition. We didn't do that when my sister and I made these many years ago. So I'm getting the last ones out. I do end up doing one more round after this right here and we have all of our ornaments made. Out of that one batch, I got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 36 ornaments. These are gonna take about two hours to bake. And while those are baking, we are going to make our French silk pie, and, which I've got right here. And we are going to make the apple pie. So if you were with me when we preserved all those apples, I made some apple pie filling. And over the weekend, I went ahead, well, this was like four or five days ago. I made some pie crust. I put the apple pie filling in here, and then I froze the whole thing. So we are gonna bake this pie frozen, the dough's frozen and everything. And then this is a pumpkin pie. I wrapped it up, I baked this one, this is already cooked. I'm just gonna let this thaw on the counter for a few hours and then I'll pop it in the fridge and that will be ready to go tomorrow. And for the French silk pie, this is a new recipe. When I made all those pies, if you were with me when we made the five holiday pies, I did not get to taste any of the chocolate pies because I gifted them away. And I thought, that sounds really good. I want a French silk pie for Thanksgiving. But this recipe is a little bit different. So for the crust, it was 20 Oreos, one cup of hazelnuts, 
and some butter blended, I'll link this recipe, in a food processor, and then I baked it at 350 for 10 minutes. And that's just gonna thaw on the counter while we make the filling. For this frozen apple pie, I do wanna put an egg wash on it before we bake it. And I'm gonna put it on a cookie sheet with some parchment in case it boils over. So for the egg wash, nothing super fancy. I do need a fork. Because I am baking this pie from frozen, I am, oh goodness, <laughs> I still have the cookie sheet in the oven from baking the pumpkin pie a couple days ago. So we're gonna get that out. We're gonna get this in. Oh! Because this is frozen, I'm gonna put a piece of foil on the top so that the top doesn't get too cooked before the inside is done. This is probably gonna take a good hour and a half to bake. I'm gonna clean up this mess and then we can make the French silk pie. The parchment paper really was the best way to do that, I think. Makes cleanup a lot easier and I don't know how I would have rolled it without them completely breaking if it wasn't for that. I was just rereading my recipe. I should have read this last night and got out some eggs and butter to come to room temperature, but I didn't. So now what I'm gonna do to get these eggs to room temperature is I just have a bowl of pretty warm water and I'm just gonna stick these eggs in there and those will warm up in my water. And then I am going to go ahead and microwave my butter for a few minutes to go ahead and get this to room temperature. So we need one and a half sticks of butter, three eggs, and we need, where did I put it? I know I got it out. Maybe I didn't, but I've got another one. We need three ounces of a 60% chocolate and we need to melt this chocolate. So I have a heat proof bowl here. So the first thing we're gonna do is chop up three ounces of chocolate. This is a four ounce bar. Each one of these squares is a half an ounce. So I'm gonna put six, ounce, or six squares on my cutting board. If you were with me when we made all of those holiday pies, I made a French silk pie, but this recipe is very different than the one that I made. And this one does contain raw eggs. The other one, we did pasteurize the eggs on the stove, but this one does not call to do that. Get this bowl a little closer so we don't lose any of our beautiful chocolate. You could melt this in a double boiler. I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave in 30 second intervals. In between melting my chocolate here, I'm rereading my recipe one more time just to make sure I don't forget any steps. I think I understand exactly what we are doing for this pie, but I have been known <laughs> to mess up recipes, but I think I understand this one. This is a little bit more straightforward than the last one. And what really intrigued me about this recipe is the hazelnuts in the Oreo crust. I mean, how delicious does that sound? So here, what we're gonna do, so I've got my bowl and I need my whisk attachment, which I think is in my dishwasher. I did not unload my dishwasher this morning. That is a chore I'm gonna to need to do tonight, but this is more fun than unloading the dishwasher, so we're gonna do this. So we're gonna put our softened butter. I did have to get a different stick of butter because I think I melted one or softened one a little too much, but no worries. So we need one and a half, so I had to do my math there for a second. This is definitely a recipe you want a electric mixer for because we are gonna be beating the eggs and the butter and sugar and all the things together for more than 15 minutes total. 
Now we're gonna add one cup of granular sugar and we're gonna beat this until the sugar dissolves and this is light and fluffy. So it may be four minutes total. And then our chocolate, you want it to melt this first so it comes down to room temperature before you add it into the butter. I'm mixing the chocolate while my butter beats so that it can cool down. It's still a little bit warm and I want it to cool down and this will just help it cool down a little faster. This has been beating for a good five minutes. The recipe says it needs to beat for three minutes or until the sugar has dissolved and it's light and fluffy. Well, it's light and fluffy, but the sugar has not dissolved. So I'm not sure if I should move on. I think I'm gonna keep beating it. Let's see. I think I'm just gonna keep going on and hopefully this turns out. So we're gonna add our vanilla now, beat for 30 more seconds. I did taste the butter sugar mixture and there is a little bit of a texture to it. So I'm hoping that when it sits, it all turns out just fine. Now we're supposed to add our chocolate. And we're not supposed to beat this in as much, we're just supposed to kind of mix it in. Now we're gonna add one egg at a time. They're definitely room temperature now. And we're gonna beat for four minutes. This did not work. Can you hear that? Super crunchy. I was hoping, this probably total has been whisking and beating for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. And so what I think I'm gonna do is pull up my other recipe that I made last time for French silk pie. I'm gonna put this in the fridge just in case it dissolves and we could you know, eat this like a pudding, but I don't think it's going to. So now I need to, I had another chocolate bar that I got out and I set somewhere. I gotta find that chocolate bar and then we can redo this whole thing. I have butter, not butter, I have Chocolate. I have chocolate melting in the microwave. I have cream in here. Now this one does require a few different steps, but at least I've done it before and I know it turns out, so that's a win. So, and thankfully I had the ingredients to do this. So I'm gonna whip up whipped cream. That's the first step. While this is whipping, I can make the sugar egg mixture on the stove. And this one we're actually gonna pasteurize I've got a measuring on my one cup. So I'm putting one and a third cups in there. We're actually gonna pasteurize these eggs so it didn't matter that they were warm or not, or room temperature or not, because we're gonna melt the sugar and pasteurize the eggs on the stove. I'm gonna stir my chocolate. I better take this off the stove. The chocolate is melted, it's outside cooling, so it comes down to room temperature. Our whipped cream is now done, so I'm gonna get this out of the mixer. Our egg mixture on the stove is done. So now what we need to do is beat the butter. But I'm gonna go rinse out my bowl before I can beat the butter. So Josh came in here and I was telling him my woes about the gritty chocolate pie. 
Now the only thing that we could come up with is that it says beat the sugar and butter together and I whisked it because later on in the recipe it says using a whisk, whisk the eggs in. So I thought I would save myself a step and just use the whisk right off the bat. Well, that might have been my downfall. That or my sugar is an organic cane sugar and the granules are a little bit thicker or bigger granules than a, like conventional white sugar. So it's either one of those two things. Let me know what you think I did wrong. I don't know what I did wrong. I, I, I was going to redo it using the beater and I was gonna put some of my sugar in a blender and just pulse it a little bit to break it up a little bit. But I really didn't wanna risk it. I wanna enjoy decorating and I was getting a little frustrated. <laughs> so I just called it and I know that this recipe is delicious. Now I haven't tasted the final product of it being done, but the people I gifted it to said it was absolutely incredible. So, and I've tasted the filling and it is delicious. Josh was just in here and he tasted it and said it's incredible. And while he was in here, he did go ahead and put batteries in my lights that I got at World Market so that I will be ready to go. And he took the plastic off my candles. I did check the ornaments. They are almost done. And I took the foil off my apple pie and it is almost done. So this pie that I'm making is really going to be a combination of two pies recipes. It's the crust from the original recipe and then it's the filling from the other recipe. And the original French silk pie filling recipe calls to make it in a pie pan. Well, when I made it the first time, it didn't all fit in my pie pan. We had quite a bit of leftover filling. And so this is gonna work out perfect because I think it should all fit in this. This is a spring form pan, a cheesecake pan, because that's what the second recipe said to do. So I think I have this all folded in here nicely. Now the only thing is my pie crust only comes halfway up. I think this should set pretty firm in the fridge overnight. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem if a little bit of the chocolate mixture goes above the crust. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge. So here's what I got at World Market and at Costco. World Market, I went with this tree skirt because it's a basket and I thought that was really pretty. I got eight of these candles to go along with these candle holders. I was envisioning these candle holders on the table runner I already have. And I like these because I could use these for any holiday. I loved these lights when we were there. I'm envisioning these along with the greenery on the mantel. And then I thought these were really pretty. These are the ornament holders. So for the ornaments that we are making, I got these. I got these for my mother-in-law because she's Dutch. And so if Renee, if you're listening, well, I think I'll just give them to her tomorrow so she can enjoy them all holiday season. Got a wreath holder because I don't have one of those for the wreath that I bought at Costco. These little pumpkins we work so hard for this whole growing season and I am not sad to see them go. I am so ready for the change of season. That is the beauty about really getting into each season is when it's over, I'm okay with it and I'm ready to welcome in the new one. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got some Christmas music on and we are going to slow down and decorate this house for the holiday. I love this time of year. And one of my favorite things about this time of year is the Christmas lights. And so that's why I wanted to get the lights for the mantle. I love this time of year. I like the dark nights. I like the dark mornings is to keep all the lights off in my house and use the Christmas tree. And now the mantle lights that we just got as the lighting in the house. I just think it brings a little bit of magic. So here is where we are going to put the Christmas tree. We invested last year in an artificial Christmas tree. Let me know if your family is a real Christmas tree or an artificial Christmas tree family. Josh and I, for the first seven years of our marriage and growing up, I always had a real Christmas tree. But I was nine months pregnant last year and the idea of going and getting a Christmas tree seemed overwhelming. 
So we got this tree at Costco and Josh is actually helping me set it up right now. And one thing that I love about this tree is that it's pre-lit. And as we were setting it up, it felt like a gift to myself, not having to string the lights on the Christmas tree. The Christmas lights are my absolute favorite thing. Well, I shouldn't say that. It is one of my absolute favorite things about this time of year. And to have a tree that is pre-lit just felt really luxurious to me. Now we probably will, you know, as our family gets older and, you know, we want to make those core memories, we will probably go back to a real tree. I have the best memories growing up of going to the Christmas tree farm, getting hot chocolate, going on tractor rides and picking out the perfect Christmas tree. But for this for this year, I am so grateful for our tree and I'm grateful for this beautiful garland we found at Costco. So we are able to get a little bit of that Christmas scent that just brings back memories to me with this garland. So here I am getting it on the mantle and I am going to double it up. And right now I'm a little bit worried because my goal was to be able to use this garland for the mantle and for the tablescape. So we started the tablescape, but we haven't finished it. We've got a few more things we're gonna add to it. And I had just enough of this greenery to use it on the table. And I think it was actually the perfect amount. I love the little splash of green that that adds to the tablescape. And then here I'm going to add the new addition, these lights. I think these lights turned out perfect. They are battery powered and they've got a timer on them. So I will be turning these on every night and leaving them on and enjoying them. And then every morning I will probably turn them on as well and enjoy them on the dark December mornings that we have right now. Well, I guess it's not technically December yet, but it feels like it. So here are some glass ornaments that I have. And these I got at a thrift store a few years back. And I thought that this little bit of gold would add just a little bit of Christmas cheer to this tablescape. And so it was kind of fun that we were able to decorate this table with a few new things, a few thrifted things, a few things that I already had to create a really simple and beautiful table. I absolutely love it. It turned out better than I could have imagined. So here where we had the pumpkins, I'm going to add these little Christmas trees. We bought these together last year. I got these at the tar Target dollar spot. And I think they're going to add just a nice little Christmas touch to the window seal. And then the, the last thing for the front porch or the only thing for the front porch is the wreath. I think our pie is almost done. I did go ahead and cover it back up because it was getting, oh yeah, it's done. It was getting a little too dark too quickly. So I uncovered it and I'm gonna pull this out. And now we have our pies done. We've got our apple pie. I'll let that completely cool. And then we've got our pumpkin pie, which has just been thawing on the counter. I'll pop it in the fridge when we're done. And then I'll make some whipped cream for our French silk pie. I think our ornaments are done too. Here are our ornaments, and then I have my hooks here, so we're gonna see if these hooks hook on these ornaments. And I still need to set this up. This is one of the most important Christmas decorations we have, the angel chime. Josh had that every year growing up, and so it's really important to him. So these are super cute. There are gold little hooks, and I'm not sure if you're supposed to put the ornament on the small side or the big side. But that's what they're looking like. That's so cute. So I'm just gonna get a hook. These are nice and dry. They smell incredible. Let's try what it looks like on the small side. I went ahead and I put the ornament on the large side of the hook. And as I was putting these on the Christmas tree, I realized that the ornament should go on the small side so that the large part of the hook can go on the branch. But that's something I didn't realize until I was actually putting them on the Christmas tree. And you can see how cute these little cinnamon ornaments and the lemon slices turned out. Now, this is the most extravagant tree I've had in a very, very long time, meaning there's actually ornaments on it. For the last four years, I think, or five years, maybe longer, all I've been doing for my Christmas tree is using lights 
and a bow on the top. And then using a piece of fabric that my mom used for her Christmas tree skirt. And then last year I used a blanket. And so the fact that I have a designated tree skirt, which I love that basket, I think it's so cute. And then having ornaments is so fun. I did want to do this project last year, but it did not happen. And I'm really grateful that I was able to get to this project this year. I think it adds a nice little rustic homemade touch and I think it's really cute. I think next year I want to do oranges because I think the orange color would add a nice kind of contrast as well. But I think the yellow and the brown and the green and all of that go together really well. So I'm just gonna take some time to get all of these ornaments onto the tree. I did make, I think, a good amount of ornaments for the tree. I didn't go overboard and I think it was the correct amount. Now, all of that hoobala about the ribbon, I decided to go with the ribbon that I've been using for the past six years. I thought the stuff that I purchased was a little bit too bright and shiny. And because my tree is a little bit more on the rustic side, the shiny gold just did not quite go with my tree. And so this is the bow I've been using for many years. It is gold, but it's kind of a matte gold. It's the same bow I've been using. It is a little bit flat. I tried to fluff it a little bit, and then I'm just gonna take the tails and kind of make them cascade down the tree pretty. Now this is an angel chime. Josh has had this decoration every Christmas he's ever had, and so this has kind of become our family tradition Christmas decoration, and I absolutely love it. It has now become our family tradition, and so it's just a part of what Christmas is around here. Now this real garland did create a little bit of a mess, and so I'm gonna take a second and sweep that up. And that is what it took today to transform this home from Christmas or from fall to Christmas. And I am so grateful for you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you would share your favorite family tradition down in the comment section, I would absolutely love spending time reading those and getting inspired and just learning what you all like to do for your family traditions this time of year. I just wanna say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I am so excited for what this holiday has in store. If you are new, I welcome you to subscribe. We are gonna be baking up a storm this holiday season, and I'm just so excited for what this winter has for us. So if you wanna watch a few of my other videos, I can pop those here. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.